Do you know what's the other big addiction for humans apart from cigarettes and alcohol? It's something that we consume every single day. Well, it's sugar. And in this addiction, along with a sedentary lifestyle, our eating habits, our sleeping habits, and most importantly, our increasing stress levels can trigger something that changes every aspect of our health. It causes something that we hear every second day, diabetes. A word that has become extremely common in our life. But do we really know what kind of damage this epidemic called type 2 diabetes is doing to us? Do we know how it's leading to increased mortality rates and healthcare costs? World Diabetes Day has just gone by and today the Quint in association with PNG Health and Evion is conducting a very special podcast called Decoding Diabetes. That's an initiative to try and decode the role of nutrition in the prevention and intervention of type 2 diabetes. Over the next few minutes We'll also try and find out what all can actually cause it, how you can detect it early, and of course, the role of supplements such as vitamin E in helping you manage it well. To give us an expert's view on the whole subject, I have with me leading nutritionist Ambika Dutt. Ambika, welcome on board. Very happy to have you with us today. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be on board. Great. And I also have a young and dynamic speaker with me, Parthavi Singh, who's actually here to share her own story. and share her first hand experience of living with type 2 diabetes parthavi welcome on board thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for having me parthavi let me come to you first and uh, let me ask you uh, when we talk about diabetes you know we usually think of a condition that someone gets in their late 40s or perhaps 50s we rarely expect young people like you to have it please tell us how you detected it How was the diagnosis? How old were you when you found out, and what was the whole story? Oh, so yeah, that is an absolute myth. Uh, and trust me, when I found out, I also met a lot of people uh, younger than me who had it. And to be honest, my experience was kind of scary. Right now, currently, I'm uh, 31. But when I fa- found out that I am diabetic, I was 26. 26. Yeah. Oh, that must have been scary. Oh yeah, totally. Like it was scary because, uh, you know, it's very common. Diabetes is a very common term, especially in India. So we don't take it as seriously unless we have it. And when you have it, you also understand actually what it means to have it. So like our generation, we're being the entire uh, uh, YOLO kind of. You know, we have this YOLO perspective, so we just take everything lightly, and uh, like. whether it's uh, food habits or uh, lifestyle none of it is something uh, you know a doctor or something what a doctor would suggest but uh, and i won't deny that i was the same person so like whether it was uh, binging on junk food and uh, going out with friends all the time and not being able to say no so i would end up going out for drinks quite often and you think it's not a lot because you're not an alcoholic but even going out for like Three, four, three to four times in a week. That is also more than enough. Like it right, can, in, like it is age. enough to do a damage. Yeah. Right. That's the age when everybody is into partying and going out and binging on junk food, etc., etc. Yeah, and eventually that's what happened. Uh, my unhealthy eating habits and irregular lifestyle, uh, and eventually my body stopped responding because that's what's going to happen you know like it will stop responding after a time and I, the way i wanted it to it wasn't the same and uh, like and that was the time like i was like okay something's wrong something's up okay i'm going to come back to you and ask you more about what kind of symptoms what kind of signs your body showed for you to understand that it is something as extreme as diabetes but before that ambika i want to turn to you and ask um, You know, in Parthavi's case, she says that it was um, lifestyle, food habits, eating too much junk, going out, drinking, uh, and perhaps a bit of stress that really caused it. I want to understand: can all of this really trigger something as extreme as diabetes? Absolutely. See, our lifestyle forms the basis of our health. I mean, maintaining a good and balanced lifestyle has many benefits to your health. Ideally, you should always keep a check on your diet, keep it balanced. regulate your alcohol consumption and one of the things that most people skip or maybe are not aware of is using supplements in their diet you always don't get the necessary nutrients from your food but supplements are your go to solution for that 
In fact, I must say that there are several studies which suggest that supplementation helps in keeping the risk associated with diabetes at bay. Oh wow, that's an interesting point. I didn't know about the supplementation part here, and we are going to discuss this in much more detail with you, Ambika, in a bit. But before that, let me go back to Parthvi. Parthvi, um, you spoke about your entire episode of how you found out. I just wanted to know and kind of understand what were the kind of signs your body was showing. um to to you know take you to the clinic and sort of get you tested for something as extreme as diabetes so it uh, started with this uh, feeling of like you know i used to feel these sudden pangs around my uh pangs of pain around my rib cage all the day as if something spoking from inside and that was obviously accompanied with uh, being tired or hungry all the time like i would be completely exhausted i was not able to do anything and and that time i had to quit my job also so i would usually initially i would ignore it and just pop a painkiller because unfortunately i did like thanks to my menstrual cramps i always have painkillers and i would still step out with my friends like you know ignoring it like this you feel obligated you have to go out with your friends right. when you that must have made it worse yeah yeah absolutely and uh, which with as days passed i started feeling weaker and weaker and i was ignoring it to a certain point till i got fever and it wasn't getting better the fever was the same and i and obviously you know that to uh, first you think maybe it's dengue or, or malaria nobody thinks diabetes right <laughs> yeah so i i was too weak and i wasn't even like i had to quit my job also because of my health so i just decided to go back home for a bit because you know that's the place eventually where we all recover when we fall sick if not by ourselves so i went back home like initially my mom would give me paracetamol and everything and i got a lot of uh, blood tests done the reports came in and they were obviously not what i expected i had an enlarged liver so the you know liver. liver pain that thing makes sense now the rib cage pain and then i i also had eosinophilia and it wasn't the term i'd heard before so you get even more scared and i obviously googled it and uh, the i had a major deficiency of vitamin b12 and of course unsurprisingly type 2 diabetes my god all those things you found out in your report that's a scary yeah. one i would have uh, cramps on in my legs all the time and then you want to pee all the time and at that time i could actually relate to my dad who's also a diabetic and otherwise you know yeah, it's always like yeah he's 30 years elder perhaps <laughs> yeah so what was the first thing that came in your mind like i'm never going to lead a normal life again or uh, you know let's make some immediate lifestyle changes it was the latter actually uh, obviously i couldn't start off immediately because initially for the first two weeks i couldn't really get out of my bed without help it went that bad so i had to cut out a lot of things from my diet you know like from rice to red meat and a lot more and rice especially because i've grown up in the east and rice is like a staple over there uh but uh, i like i consulted with uh, my doctor about my food habits and it did help a lot uh you know uh, it uh, actually reminds me that uh, i had a long list of do's and don'ts and i actually followed it um, i added uh, green vegetables and fruits to my diet more than i used to consume earlier and along with that i used to make sure uh, to keep an eye on my vitamin and protein intake and uh, things like maggi and all were out of the table entirely and my doctor also suggested vitamin e supplements like evion to Uh, prevent risks associated with diabetes which really proved to be a lot helpful wow parthvi seems like you made the best out of this condition you were quick with your actions to curb the condition and i think that worked in your favor and i think uh, what really worked for you is that you included vitamin e supplements like evion in your diet vitamin e supplements I'm hearing this for the first time Ambika can you just explain a little more on how vitamin E supplements help in controlling diabetes Yeah sure it's something that people often do not consider including in their diet plans Vitamin E is a powerful antioxidant that keeps the body cells nourished and keeps cells from clotting all this helps in curbing complications to the cardiovascular system In addition cells use vitamin E to interact with each other 
and to carry out many important functions. It can be hard to track the quantity of vitamin E in each item of food we eat. You know, uh, in that regard, a supplement is an easy way to include the required amount of vitamin E in one's daily life. Uh, so now going back to pinpointing the reason for diabetes, uh, as in your case, Pathvi, it is unhealthy lifestyle choices. But you know, the exact reason of most type of diabetes is unknown. Basically, in all the cases, uh, sugar builds up in the bloodstream because the pancreas stop producing enough insulin. And it usually takes people time to figure out their symptoms. Oh, that's actually a lot of information and useful information. Honestly, I did not have any idea about all these things. You know, what I wanted to ask you is that since you're an expert, what are the health complications uh, people with diabetes can face? Yeah, actually, even I'd like to know all of this. Well, that's an interesting thing you asked and something that we all should be aware of. Well, actually, uh, there's a long list of complications that diabetes can lead to. For example, numbness in hands and feet, cardiovascular risks, retinopathy or eye disease, deterioration of kidney function and impaired immunity are some uh, common complications faced by the diabetic patients. The cardiovascular disorders are the leading cause of death among diabetic patients. Reduction in diseases associated with cardiovascular system is one of the main goals in the treatment of diabetes mellitus. The obvious reasons for increased risk of cardiovascular diseases in diabetes mellitus are the generation of oxidative stress in the body due to uh, you know, high blood glucose level, a condition called hyperglycemia. Apart from the obvious reasons, there could be a genetic susceptibility in uh, diabetes mellitus patients leading to increased cardiovascular risk. In fact, a majority of uh, diabetes mellitus patients have type 2 diabetes mellitus. And you will be surprised to know that 90% of the Indian population have a genotype called HP22 genotype, which leads to increase in the cardiovascular risk by 44% among the type 2 diabetic patients. My God, that's a huge number. And no wonder that's why we are known as the diabetes capital of the world. Yeah, seriously. So, Ambika, can you please uh, give us some tips to reduce it? See, the drill is really simple. Regular exercise to enhance your metabolism, bolstering your nutrition quotient, and as your doctor mentioned to you, green vegetables such as spinach and avocado and vitamin E supplements such as Evian are quite helpful to reduce the risk associated with diabetes. But how does vitamin E help? I mean, I only knew it's good for hair and skin. I've used a lot of vitamin E capsules on my hair, you know. <laughs> uh, the effects of the supplements are different in different conditions. But I think we should understand the basis first. Uh, so, diabetes negatively affects vascular functions in uh, both arteries and small vessels, resulting in an increased risk of cardiovascular events. Several trials with vitamin E have suggested a successful reduction in uh, risks related to cardiovascular diseases in diabetic patients. And like I said earlier, uh, the antioxidant properties of vitamin E in e uh, protect the body from free radicals, keeps it nourished and uh, keep blood from clotting from within. And you know, numerous studies have shown that supplementation with vitamin E is associated with uh, approximately a 34% risk reduction in uh, cardiovascular diseases uh, in the patients with uh, HP22 genotype. 34% reduction, that's huge. Yeah. Yes, yes. And hence, antioxidant therapy like vitamin E uh, may be a potential success in highly susceptible patients with uh, diabetes mellitus and HP22 genotype. You know, you're actually talking to a highly susceptible patient, which is me, because uh, both my parents have diabetes. So I think I should definitely start with my vitamin E supplement from today itself. I should definitely uh, get some EV on capsules for myself. But thank you so much, Ambika. This has been a very, very enlightening session for me and I'm sure all our listeners. Thank you so much for breaking it down for us and helping us understand the actual science behind the role of supplementation to reduce the risk of uh, you know, so many health conditions that we spoke about today. Thank you so much. Pleasure, my pleasure. And thank you so much, Parthavi, for being such a sport and sharing your experience with us. And for all our listeners, uh, let me tell you that Parthavi is somebody who looks absolutely fit and smashing and nobody on this planet can say that she <laughs> has been, she's gone through so much that she spoke about today. Thank you so much, Parthavi, for being with us. Thank you, Ani. Uh, I, and thank you for calling me fit and smashing. <laughs> <laughs> you are. But anyway, 
before wrapping up i just want to say one last thing and that's about the fact that you know once you get an ailment be it diabetes uh, a heart condition or any other disease i think it's extremely difficult to reverse its impact so yes i think we all should always remember that prevention is definitely better than cure but what we also want to tell all our listeners is that one can manage diabetes effectively when it is diagnosed and treated timely with the necessary supplements like evion to avoid further complications and on that note dear listeners here's wishing you a healthier tomorrow and hoping that this discussion helps you and your loved ones in their fight against diabetes thank you you were listening to the quince podcast 